Okay, hello class. I am not in school today, so we are going to cover 29.4 over um, this video. Uh, 29.4 and 29.3 are very similar. We're just reiterating the same points of how to graph a rational function given key features of the graph. So to start off with, um, at any point, if you want to pause the video or try one on your own, feel free to, or you can listen to the video all the way through. Um, I would recommend pausing the video for the check for understanding so that you can try them out. But of course, um, I will go through all the answers, okay? So this uh, is on page uh, 457 in your books, okay? So if you want to turn to that, that's um, where this is, okay? And today we're going to be um, analyzing and graphing rational functions, identifying asymptotes, intercepts, and holes, and then we're going to analyze and graph rational functions representing real-world scenarios. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start off with what we did before, and then we're going to connect it to a real-world situation, okay? Okay, so let's start off with, um, so this is from, this was from last section, so this was from lesson uh, 29.3. I just put it in there just to um, make sure that you guys remember all the steps to how to graph a rational function, okay? So remember, um, when you're graphing a rational function, you need to do all those steps from 29.3. The one thing we're adding is if we're trying to find the sum or difference of two or more rational expressions, it's necessary to combine them into a single expression first. So in other words, we're going to be finding common denominators, okay? That's what we're going to have to do, okay? And then this is going to make it easier to identify any uh, features of the graph, okay? All right, so let's look at the first example, okay? So the first example is already written out for you, but as you can see, you have two rational functions, and so you have to find the uh, common denominator of both. So the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, simplify each part, okay, by factoring out what's in the uh, denominator, okay? And so when we factor, this stays the same, okay, because there's nothing to factor, but then the x squared minus 2x, you can factor out an x, and then you're left off with x minus 2, okay? And so when we're trying to find the common denominator, they both share an x minus 2, but the uh, second one has another x in common, so we want to include that in our common denominator, okay? And so when we're trying to combine these, the only thing that needs to be added is for the first one, you need to multiply an x and an x on top and bottom and so you'll get 2x over x times x minus 2 minus 3 over x times x minus 2 okay once you've done that you can combine those and so you're going to get the single expression of 2x minus 3 over x times x minus 2 okay and so from there now we can use all the necessary parts that we uh, need to find the first one is your vertical asymptotes are where your denominator equals zero so in other words when x times x minus 2 equals zero you split those apart and so you would get x equals zero and then x minus 2 equals zero and so x would equal positive 2 here so that's how we get those vertical asymptotes that's the um easier one of the two okay the second one now you can switch it up a little but you can find horizontal asymptotes um this one you're finding intercepts first so uh, intercepts remember to find your x-intercepts it's when y equals zero you can just set your numerator equal to zero and then solve for x so you're going to get um add three and divide by two it's going to be 1.5 and then for y-intercepts that's going to be where x is zero so look what happens when x is zero you're going to get two times zero minus three over zero times zero minus two the numerator you're just going to get a negative three but then the denominator because you have the zero here you're going to get a zero on the bottom so in other words this doesn't exist so there's going to be none okay so that's for intercepts for horizontal asymptotes, remember that trick I showed you? You want to identify your highest degree in the numerator and the denominator. So your highest degree in the numerator was um, 2x minus 3. It would have been 1. Okay, And then your degree in the denominator, when you multiply x times x, you're going to get x squared. So that's why the degree is 2. Okay, When your denominator degree is greater than your numerator degree, you need to remember... Um, that you're going to have a horizontal asymptote automatically at y equals zero. Okay. 
Okay, so then graphing all those parts, you want to graph your uh, vertical asymptotes, which they did. They graphed it at x equals 0, okay, and then x equals 2. Where is that? Right here. It's very small, so let me show you guys. It's like right there, okay? And then horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. I want you on the test to make sure you're drawing in your asymptotes, so make sure that you have uh, the dotted lines drawn in. Okay, And then the x-intercept they had at uh, zero one or 1.5 comma 0, so that would be right about here. Okay, And then just generally drawing the graph, okay, they would make curves like that again you can just plug this into your calculator um so that you don't have to necessarily find the other points okay i but i do want you to find the certain parts of uh, the graph okay Okay, so that's for that one, okay? So if you want to try the next one on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I'm going to go through this next one, okay? So I need you to find all the parts, and I'm not going to always give you um, which parts you're trying to find. So it says analyze the graph of the rational function and then write your answer on a grid paper, okay? Show your work. So the first one, for that one, you're going to have to find a common denominator. They're already factored, so our common denominator is just going to be um, those two denominators multiplied by one another. Okay? From there, you need to figure out which each one needs. So the first one, you need to multiply by x plus 3 over x plus 3. For the second one, you're going to multiply x plus 1 times x plus 1. Okay? And so for the first one, you're going to get 1 times x plus 3. That's just going to be x plus 3, okay, over your common denominator, okay. okay. And then subtract it from 2 times x plus 1. I'm going to distribute it through, so you're going to get 2x. Um, be careful, it's a negative 2, so we want to make sure we're doing minus 2, okay. All over, okay, uh, x plus 1 x plus 3, okay? Combine like terms now on the top. You can combine x and negative 2x. That's going to be minus x, okay? And then 3 and negative 2 is going to be a positive 1 over your common denominator, okay? And now you're ready to find the asymptotes using that new equation you just found, okay? So for the first one, vertical asymptotes, that's where x equals, I'm sorry, your denominator equals 0. So I'm going to set x plus 1 equal to 0 and x plus 3 equal to 0. And so you're going to get two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and then x equals negative 3. Also, one thing to note, you're not going to have holes in this function just because nothing is canceling out on top and bottom. So in other words, there's going to be no holes. Uh, for horizontal asymptotes, that's where you're looking at the degree. So the numerator degree is, the highest is negative x, that's going to be 1, okay? And then your denominator degree is going to be careful, okay? When you FOIL this out, you're going to do x times x, so it's going to be 2, okay? All right, and so your denominator degree is greater than your numerator degree, so automatically y equals 0 for your horizontal asymptote. Um, for x-intercepts, that's going to be where y equals 0, or you can set just your numerator equal to 0, okay? Okay, and so what I'm going to have is negative x plus 1 equals 0, okay? You can subtract 1 and then divide by 1, or you can get add x, and you're going to get x is equal to 1, okay? For the x-intercept, for the y-intercept, um, if I plug in 0 into that equation... Okay, I'm going to get negative 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 3, okay? Notice here how you're going to have uh, 1 on top, and then on the bottom, this is going to be 1, and that's going to be 3. 1 times 3 is 3. So you are going to have a y-intercept at 0 comma 1 third, okay? So just be careful with that, okay? So now that we have all the parts, we're going to graph it on our on our grid, okay? So this is your final step. Draw your grid, okay? You're going to have um, vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1. So that's going to be here. Draw a dotted line, okay? x equals negative 3. That's going to be here, 
Okay. For your horizontal asymptote, that's going to be at y equals 0, so it's going to be here. Okay. And then for x-intercepts, you're going to get 1 comma 0, so here. And then for y-intercept, you're going to get 1 comma 1, 0 comma 1 third right there. Okay. Once you've gotten all those parts, you can take your graphing calculator and you can just plot it. Okay, all I'm asking for is you to be able to do the math on the side um, so that you can identify key features. Um, but you don't have to like find any other points. You can just use your calculators, okay? Saves you a little bit of time. Okay, so go to y equals. I would type in the equation that you found, the negative x on oh, y equals, okay? I would type in the negative x plus 1, okay? And I would do that in parentheses also, okay? Close parentheses. And then divide it by x plus 1, x plus 1 times x plus 3, okay? And then click graph. And so you should have a graph that looks like that, okay? What I would do is I would just simply say, like, Okay, something like this. Okay, so just getting close to those asymptotes, like so. Okay, and if you run out of graphing paper, you can just redraw anything, okay, like that. Okay, but the main thing I'm looking for is, are you able to identify the key features? If you're not able to graph it as best, that's fine, okay? Okay. So that's for that one. Okay. Okay. So it says, does the graph in example A cross the horizontal asymptote? Okay. Pause this video now and do these three problems um, for your graph. Okay. Okay. So for the first one, okay, it does cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay. It doesn't mean, the horizontal asymptote doesn't mean it can't cross because the horizontal asymptote, it does still exist there. It's just when y equals zero, okay? For the next one, okay, you need to identify the domain and the range of both, okay? So for the domain, you want to deal with the vertical asymptotes, in other words, okay? So you're starting off with, I'm going to look at my vertical asymptotes here, okay? So in other words, what's happening is you're starting at, uh, you're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 3 and a negative 1. So you want to make sure you have it, okay? You're going to have from negative infinity, you're going to stop at negative 3, okay? You're going to union it with, okay, uh, negative 3 to negative 1. And then union it with negative 1 to infinity, okay? You just want to make sure you're excluding those, um, those asymptotes, okay? And then for the range, the, ver the horizontal asymptote, you can still cross over that. So in other words, what we want to do is for the, this is domain, for the range, it's actually always going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? In no place does y, um, y does not exist, okay? So you want to make sure you include that, okay? And then for number three, okay, analyze the graph of the rational function, okay. Um, when I say analyze, okay, I'm just talking about the key features, um, meaning the asymptotes, okay, any holes you have. In this case, you didn't, okay, uh, and then the intercepts, okay. So those are written above, but um, you can write them down below if in case you want uh, to cover that. Okay, so let's move on to an application, okay? So, of course, with all these, we can have an application problem, and we have to learn to graph these, okay? So we're looking at a business involving a rational function and finding the average cost per unit. Before deciding to make new products, business conduct is very, very thorough cost, or, or very, um, thought out cost analysis with the primary question being whether they anticipate a cost per unit with a small enough they can make a reasonable profit so that's the main point we want to make a profit okay so we have all the information here it says a recording store has a fixed cost of eighteen thousand. 
And this includes uh, studio time, equipment, musicians, etc. And then it costs a dollar and twenty cents to make a CD. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we just want to start with actually a linear function. Always start with a linear function, then move to a rational function. Okay. So how do I write a linear function? Okay. You start with the fixed amount, eighteen thousand, and then you're adding the amount per CD where X represents CDs. Okay. Um, so we have that function, okay, and then it says divide by the number of x units. So the cost is affected by how many CDs we're producing. So we're going to take that cost function and divide it by the amount of CDs, which is x, okay? Now this becomes our rational function, okay? So that's kind of the steps you want to think out, okay? From there, now we just take that function and we're just finding the features of them. So any vertical asymptotes where you set your denominator to equal to zero, so x is just going to equal zero. Okay. For the numerator, find the horizontal asymptote for a of x. So the ratio of the lead, I'm sorry, let me do this. Okay. So the degree in the numerator is one. The degree in the denominator is also one. Okay, so that was the rule where you had to take the coefficients and find the ratio between them. So in other words, okay, what we have is for our numerator's coefficient, that's 1.2. For our denominator's coefficient, that's just one. So I'm dividing 1.2 by one, and so your horizontal S note is going to be at y equals 1.2. Okay, and then for the domain of a of x, remember this is uh, when we're talking about cost. So the domain is the set of counting numbers because we're talking about CDs, x, okay? So you cannot have any negative numbers, nor can you have zero because you can't have zero CDs, otherwise it's going to make it an undefined function, okay? All right, so keeping all that in mind, okay, um, you want to use all that stuff to help you out, okay? So either you can put it in a table, which I've already written out for you, and then graph it, okay? Another option is you can do what you've done before. You can find the y-intercepts, x-intercepts, and then also just find the general trend, and so you're going to get a graph that looks like this, okay? So pause this video right now. Think about why I didn't connect the uh, pieces, okay? Okay, so why I didn't connect the pieces is because we're talking about the amount of CDs. When you're talking about amount of CDs, okay, you cannot have a decimal amount, okay? As much as we would like that, to have 0.34 of a CD, the CD wouldn't work. So we want to make sure we have a discrete function, which means you're not going to connect the dots, okay? So we have a graph that looks like that, and that would be your answer, okay? Because it just said graph what I have, okay? Okay. All right, so for the last couple of problems, it says explain why the domain of a of x in example b includes only the discrete values because you can't have a negative amount of CDs. Okay, and why we don't include zero is because we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, okay? Meaning you cannot include that, okay? Okay, for number five, it says, what is the average cost per CD if the studio produces 10,000 CDs, 15,000 CDs? Okay, I'll just do one of these, okay? So what you're going to do is, if it's producing, I'm going to actually go down here. Okay. Skip over that. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So, what is the average cost? When you're talking about 10,000 CDs, that's where x equals 10,000. Okay. And so, I'm going to plug that into my function, in other words. And so, you're going to get. Okay. You should get this, okay? So you should get 18,000, okay, plus 1.2 times 10,000, okay, divided by 10,000, okay? And so you would get um, 
three dollars okay that's for the first one for fifteen thousand you just repeat that process but now replace that with fifteen thousand okay and if you want to trade it out you will get two dollars and forty cents Um, for number six, you know you're going the opposite way. If the studio wants to make an average cost of two dollars, how many CDs must they make? Justify your answer. Okay. So in other words, uh, if we're looking at two dollars, that's gonna be your a of x. So you're gonna now set that equation equal to two. So it's gonna be two times eighteen or two equals eighteen thousand plus one point two x over x. Easiest way to do that, cross multiply. You're going to get 2x equals 18,000 plus 1.2x. Subtract 1.2 and then you're going to get uh, 0.8 and then divide by 0.8. You should get x is equal to 22,500 uh, CDs. Make sure you label it. And so it says, what does the horizontal asymptote have in the context of the problem? An example would be, well, the horizontal asymptote, remember, is at 1.2, okay? So in other words, it's like right here, okay? So what 1.2 represents is it represents the minimum amount because you have to, like, think about cost, Okay? You have to think about how much are you producing to get to a certain amount, and so that represents the minimum cost, okay? So that's for the application problem. Um, Just think, make sure you have a function that you know is rational. That's the biggest thing, is a lot of times I see a lot of students plot just a linear function. Um, That's where they fall short with all these questions, okay? All right, so this is extra practice in case you want it. Okay, but I, the last part, I just want to go over kind of the schedule. We're wrapping up Unit 5. So we just finished uh, Section 29 today, okay? 30, there's really only one section, so I'll assign that practice check 30 tomorrow. And both of those will be due on Thursday. So if you want to get a start on practice check 29, that would be great, okay? We are going to do an embedded assessment on Friday, which means that's going to be due on Friday. Um, if you want to get a head start on that, okay, it's already in your books. It's going to be, oh, I just lost my page. Okay, it's on, it's the last unit five embedded assessment three. Okay, if you want to get started on that today, that's fine, um, but we will be working on it on Friday. And then also on Friday, we're going to have a concept checked on activity 29 and 30. That's going to be a really good indication of where your understanding is before the big test, which is going to be next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. What's going to happen is on Tuesday, I'm going to give you 15 minutes to start it, okay, and then Wednesday the entire time okay it is a large test so you need to make sure you're knowing your material because otherwise you're not going to have a lot of time to think um through each problem because there are going to be problems where it deals with simplifying rational expressions uh with complex uh expressions all that fun stuff okay so you have a bunch of stuff to work on the rest of the time is yours if you have any questions email me but i'll be back tomorrow and we'll cover 30.1 tomorrow okay you guys can sign off now have a great day bye